Hey guys, thank you to all the subscribers. I appreciate your support. Uh, being a new YouTuber, I, I need all of your support, please. So thank you for that. Uh, this workout was quite a reality check. I got under the bar for the squat and it didn't move really well. I realized how fatigued I was as I've been doing some yoke practice recently. It's, uh, it's, it's tiring. So I got under 100 kg. My first work set is very light and I, I, had, I said, well, it's not going anywhere. So I moved on to power cleans and that uh, takes me to the topic of the title of the video today, be metronomic. So the term metronomic is rather new to me and I learned it from, uh, from while I was watching cricket. The commentators in cricket are very articulate in how they describe certain parts of the game and some, some players. So they were explaining about a fast bowler who was metronomic, very regular in his rhythm very mechanically correct and accurate every single time for the whole day. And I took inspiration from that and I wanted to implement that in my power cleans. I am I, I try to be very aware of my movements in squats, deadlifts, overhead press and bench press, but even more so when I'm doing my power cleans and my power snatches because A, I had, don't have a coach who has told me, so I have taught myself. I do know that these lifts are quite technical so I, I, I love um, doing it with a practice mode. If you can see my elbows in this one is pointing downwards. And that is what I was, I was working on this particular uh, session today. Uh, making sure when I rack the bar up, when I catch the bar on my shoulders, my elbows are pointing upwards more so that there's a groove formed on my deltoids and the bar rests there. So sometimes you just have to make adjustment when, when you're not optimal for back squat and heavy lifts. And I really love immersing myself into these kind of Olympic weightlifting movement and hence the title metronomic. I wanted to be metronomic and, and uh, just be accurate and regular and rhythm, rhythmic about it. And there is a quite a lot of satisfaction which I get from it. And it is an act which is quite uh, bereft from achieving to move heavy weights, uh, Olympic weightlifting, because you just cannot go heavy in these. Uh, you, you just have to really create a set pattern of movement and repeat it over and over and over again. And, and that's what I find satisfying. Uh, I suppose people can relate to that kind of experience or that kind of precision of movement in, in anything. It could be playing a piano for someone, or it could be even uh, um, you know, having a practice of some sort of martial art where things are just going quite smoothly. However, um, you know, in weightlifting, it's quite simple. It's just you and the bar, and there's less complications. And uh, yes, it was very nice to be involved in a conscious practice that's what i would call it quite um, not quality based but quantity sorry not quantity based but quality based and i'm glad to have that enough time as well in the gym uh, i just completely cut down my my session this day and uh, didn't do much squats so i'm continually pushing my elbows up and receiving the bar with locked knee because it's a power clean and I was quite happy and after every reps I was doing elbows up, elbows up and saying myself elbows up and watching the video each time. So it was a great process and I encourage you to perhaps use this term for yourself as well. It's possible that most of you are doing a bro kind of split and I have nothing against it. Uh, it's just that those days when you're doing chest or triceps or shoulders, you're just doing reps after reps after reps after reps without much, you know, um, metronomic thinking that I need to get this right uh, because you get fatigued a lot. This could happen if you are doing some sort of a class in Les Mills or CrossFit. You could be getting a pride and, and a joy or sense of, of fulfillment that you've done lots of reps 
and you're sweating and you're puffing. But in that uh, high volume, you can lose that kind of uh, accuracy, you know, the precision, that which makes you be involved more. And, and I must say that overhead squat is one of those movements which just challenges me and it, I have to just turn it all on. I have to practice with very consciously. So this was 80 kg. I thought it moved well, nice and tight I was and quite fast. I bent my back a little bit, my elbows were okay. And um, this bar had a knurl, very sharp knurls, and it hit my neck, which is probably a good, good thing that I knew that it was moving quite up high, right under my chin, and it sort of scratched me. So 90 kg was my first attempt in in last few years. Let's see. Yeah, I think I think I didn't have a proper jump, or I didn't time my jump. So that's another aspect of 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 power cleans. You have to jump at the right time, and there are, you know, trigger points on the body like your thighs when it hits or upper thigh. So it's quite interesting um, to learn that. And then I moved on to bench presses. Uh, you will see me failing right here purposely. I failed my bench press so that I know that the safeties will catch it. My arms were really, my shoulders were really sore by that time. So I just needed to get some bench press in, and I just wanted to be safe. Uh, I hope you are liking the videos guys, recently there has been quite a few new subscribers. I have been almost begging to my workmates, folding my hands to them and saying please subscribe. Uh, I'm enjoying the challenge of doing something new and how it has made me uh, be more diligent, be more careful in delivering what I'm delivering. I'm making sure that my videos are properly oriented. There's enough light and I speak clearly. And then once that is all done, I get, I speak to people. I'm sending messages to my friends and families overseas in India and my mate in England that please subscribe to my channel. <laughs> so it's quite a humbling process. It's, I like that at any age you should be able to pursue something which has a power to make you a little humble and and bow down to people because <laughs> we don't do that normally so that way I, I really have been enjoying this and if you have any questions uh, any you can write them in the comments i i definitely have a lot of topics i love doing these monologues where i'm talking about a certain topic and i think as a trainer and a coach i have ability to provide some good content in terms of um, psychological side of things, uh, more deeper aspects of training and uh, and how each time you can just improve. If I have to say that the one thing that I learned a lot by being a coach and a trainer is the realization that I need to work on myself first. I think that should be a core message each one should be given to themselves that before they point fingers to others, there is a lot that can be improved within you and that is the only thing I've learned to be honest. I, I almost, I sort of gave up when I finished coaching and, and train, personal training. I just said to myself, now it's time to work on myself and I'm enjoying that journey. And I hope you like my videos and please subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thank you guys. Bye.